fast you were going. What? How fast you were going. I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast. If you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot. Leave now. Run in your safe space. Get your little cloth for your tears. All the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and his guest and do not reflect the opinions of any local or government agency. Welcome to Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. I'm your host, Ice Man, as always. It's Monday, and I'm uh, not usually live right now because I'm usually all right tickets. Aaron All Nighter, I appreciate it. Uh, y'all go check him out if you get a chance. On uh, He's usually Monday through Friday uh, on the Fall River Experiences where I watch him out of Massachusetts. I, I just find it very interesting watching stuff and uh, listening to stuff that not down here where I'm at. He said he was speeding. <laughs> if you are, you way out of my jurisdiction, Aaron. Of course, it's raining, so I figured, why the hell not? I've been saving uh, a lot of uh, Louisiana stories lately. Uh, of course, you know they're all law enforcement based with me. So, since it was raining and I didn't have nothing else better to do, uh decided to go ahead and shoot on here and do it live. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get out, get the housekeeping out the way. Go like and subscribe. Facebook, YouTube, uh, review me. Uh, hit the notification bells. So you know when I do go live. Uh, you, uh, We have the uh, private group uh, page. Uh, it's the Motor Cop Clubhouse. Clubhouse is two separate words. It will help you find it. Uh, you have to answer three questions to me to approve you to get in uh so and it every it's free but you still got to answer a question so you can do that and we uh we go back and forth with each other and they're pretty good and stuff like that too so it's kind of fun if you decide to you want to join the clubhouse uh go check out the etsy store for the merchandise i haven't uh we got to take some t-shirts out some other merchandise you can check that out help support the show if you want to if not don't do it you just look cool as shit, you know, wearing one of my shirts. Uh, Freebird's got a shirt, uh, the box, and Holster also. Y'all know them for Wednesday night. <clears throat> you know, like, yeah, this filter, I thought I looked more badass with this filter than I did with the uh, cartoon and the uh, Brad Pitt one. I like to change stuff. I had another one. I, it's really stupid looking. I might throw that on there Wednesday. It's kind of funny as shit. So we're going to start out on... Uh, jump on into the story we had a person shot in uh denham springs that's in livingston parish which is uh usually not a very high crime area at all hello yvette not in uh like i said it's not a like high crime area in here but it, it's coming over it's coming on over from baton rouge which is just right across the river anyway a person this was a short story a person was shot and wounded uh in livingston parish monday morning the sheriff's office out here said the uh, shooting happened around 7 a.m. in the morning on Rosewood Street in the neighborhood off of Lockhart Road. Uh, not sure where that's at. Uh, Lockhart Road's a fairly nice area, or it used to be anyway. They said the victim was taken to the hospitals and expected to survive. Uh, authorities have not identified a uh, suspect or the victim at this time. So uh, somebody got shot. Unfortunately, uh, they're on. I'm sure they know who it is. That early in the morning, it's probably at somebody's house. Uh, it's probably something domestic or something like that. I'm sure eventually something more will come out of that story. Uh, I threw that one in there because it's just happened this morning, and it's not a area that's usually uh, prone to uh, violence like that at all. So, But it's, it's moving on down. We're going to go to the parish next door to Living's Parish. says, Ascension Parish. These are involving some juveniles, unfortunately, which is uh, getting all too common. Juveniles lately are, have lost their ever-loving minds for some reason. Anyway, uh, they uh, arrested some juvenile suspects for uh, 
attempted murder uh, in the drive-by shooting in Donaldsonville. Police said that juveniles that were arrested <clears throat> for a shooting that happened just on the 19th was today, the 22nd. So it was a few days ago. <clears throat> the uh, the Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office said a man told deputies he and a passenger were stopped at the intersections of Highway uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 3089 and Highway 70 when another vehicle pulled up beside them and opened fire. Neither of the men, uh, neither people in that vehicle I got shot at were injured, which is a good thing. But they arrested two 17-year-old kids following the shooting. They were both booked in the St. Bernard Parish Juvenile Detention Center on uh, two counts of attempted first-degree murder, assault by drive-by shooting, illegal use of weapons, aggravated assault, and criminal damage to property. It's two 17-year-old kids doing drive-bys. Parents, uh, you need to get a hold of y'all's kids. If they're doing this already at 17, by the time they, if they, if they survive uh, to make it into their mid 20s, they're going to be on the streets committing. I mean, there's not much worse than trying to kill people, you know. So, I mean, I hope these people can get their their children under control or or something. I, I don't know what they need to do with these kids. I got a picture on this next one. Uh, this is a story we uh, already ta- touched on before. Uh, a couple weeks back, we talked about some uh, street racers and stuff like that going on in Baton Rouge area. And uh, this fellow right here, he was he got he got arrested. He uh, got in an accident, fleeing from the police. Uh, in the accident, resulted in the he hit another car. The driver of that car died. Uh, if I remember correctly, don't quote me. I think she was a school teacher or something like that. Uh, I think she was a, a in her forties or early fifties, something like that. No, she was a forty-nine year old lady. Uh, her name was Cheryl Weston. He ran into her and killed her. Well, uh, problem is uh, he he got arrested, bonded out of jail. Well, he's got another warrant out for his arrest now because. Uh, his arraignment day was today, and he didn't come to court. Just didn't show up. Uh, I think they got him charged with uh, negligent homicide or something like that. And uh, but now he has uh, a new warrant for his arrest. I was trying to see if they uh, had a new bond amount, which he may not have no bond now. Oh, they're they're asking for his bond. He has now to be revoked, and he has a warrant out for his arrest. Uh, he actually is facing uh, charges of manslaughter, flight from an officer, and multiple traffic violations. Uh, he done fucked up and didn't show up for court. Now, this was just for an arraignment. If anybody knows anything about court, you go to for arraignment. It's just basically saying, do you get you do you have an attorney? You go in front of the judge to ask if you have an attorney. If you say no. They'll give you a public defender if you want one, and or, or not, or they'll you bring your own attorney with you. And basically, they ask you, are you guilty or not guilty? Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, people say they're not guilty. Then you go on, you get another court date, usually a month or so down the line. For they have motion days and stuff like that. I mean, it's not like on TV. Then you have that motion day, then you'll come back. They might have another motion day, and then stuff will get set to, for trial, and then it usually gets continued for this or that. So you're probably looking in about, usually it's about a year, or not, if not longer, before you go to court on something, on a felony like that. But he done fucked up. He'd have been out of jail for this whole entire time, even if they find him guilty. But now he fucked up, and he didn't show up for court. Now he's gonna have he's gonna go to jail and they're not gonna let him out this time. They're gonna make once once he get him back, his ass is gonna sit there because he doesn't show that he can't be responsible and show up for court. Him right there. So uh good luck with they, they you're gonna get caught eventually. There's only so long you can run there, buddy. So uh should have showed up for court. That's just being irresponsible and stupid. Stupid. Next, we have uh, we had some shots fired this morning at the at some Baton Rouge police officers. Uh, they did uh, arrest the suspect in a nearby neighborhood. 
Uh, a person reportedly shot at Baton Rouge police officers and ran away earlier Monday before getting taken into custody in a nearby neighborhood. They said around 2.45 a.m., Baton Rouge Police Department was called to the 5900 block of Cadillac Street. Uh, regarding a report of someone at a home at a homeowner's door. So I guess somebody was at their door. I don't know if they were knocking or what. But everybody's got these ring cameras now. I mean, it's kind of stupid to walk up to people's houses like that. Be fucking around. You don't belong there. The police started to arrive, and uh, the individual reportedly began running and firing shots at the responding officer. Uh, Patricia Lewis lived in the area and says SWAT negotiated with the man for hours so obviously wherever they got him in he barricaded himself in and SWAT came in and they started nego- well SWAT did negotiation they got negotiators because trust me the SWAT guys there were I, I used to do SWAT a long time ago and you just want to kick doors in cause that's what you're trained to do they assured him that he would not that if he would come out they would not harm him or anything just come out uh, they tried to call him numerous times and asked him to please come out and surrender. Shortly after 7 a.m., police said he uh, he was taken into custody near the 5,000 block of Picard Street, just blocks from where the shooting reportedly took place. They said no officers were injured. It's a developing story, so they, they uh, didn't say he surrendered and just gave up. I don't know, uh, but he's in custody. No, nobody, nobody's dead. Nobody shot, which is a good thing. I'm sure you can be charged with uh, attempted uh, second degree murder stuff like that. So, uh, no, why he could have just ran. I don't know what his point of was shooting at somebody unless he really wanted to kill him. Because uh, if he thinks that if he would have hit the cops, it would have been way worse. And he thinks they really that if he's running, they shoot him. That they might just say, all right, we can't find him, and just go about their business. It don't work like that. Uh, you just picked up worse charges now. I mean, it's just stupid. I don't know why anybody would do that. But, I mean, never said uh, criminals were real, real smart, did I? Uh, so, he'll be going to jail for a while. And I'm sure he'll get a very, very large bond. Now, uh, I was going to throw this out. I'm not talking about this doing a video and stuff Wednesday night at 7. I don't know. Holster will be here. I'm not sure if Freebird or a box will be here with us, but there is a video that happened in Baton Rouge recently about some uh, some officers breaking up a fight. It's kind of like, I don't know, they're saying that they did it wrong or whatever. We're going to watch the video and talk about that uh, on the Wednesday episode. So uh, if y'all want to come back for that, uh, you'll, we're going to talk about it. What's up, Bronson? Just decided it was raining. Couldn't get the right ticket, so I figured I'd get on here and do some of this uh, Louisiana crime stuff. Uh, since we seem like we got a lot of it, I just named it differently. Uh, we got uh, where are we going here? Wrong story. Was it the wrong story? All right, we got a. Uh, here we go. Where did it go? I got this. The uh, thing I got some messed up. No, I don't. Here we go. Picture two. This right here. This is uh, Sheriff uh, Craig Weber. From the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office. Uh, he has suffered some type of a medical emergency last night and they had to bring him to the hospital. Uh, the family's requesting uh, privacy and stuff right now. They haven't said what happened. We don't know if he had a heart attack or some, something else happened, but uh, and they said he will he will address his condition at a later date when possible. So I'm assuming that he's uh, supposed to. Uh, Whatever diagnosis is, he's supposed to get better. But uh, we don't know what's wrong with him. Let's hope he gets better soon and uh, can get back to work. And I'm sure all the people over there in that parish are hoping also, except for the, the bad guys. I mean, the bad guys may not want him to get better. But Sheriff Weber, we want him to get better as soon as possible. Scroll on down here. 
This next one here, this we're going over to Laplace, which is uh, about midway point between uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Now, this Laplace woman uh, has been arrested for cruelty to animals. Uh, she had uh, 46 dogs uh, living in her house with her. Yes, 46. Uh, said she was arrested after deputies found 46 dogs living in deplorable conditions inside her home. According to the St. John the Baptist Parish deputies, 42-year-old uh, Canandra Markey told law enforcement officers she was a dog breeder as they searched her home on East Frisco Drive. Well, I appreciate it, Jim. Uh, so yeah, I think it's the first time I've seen you live on here. It's the first time you say anything, but I appreciate it. Uh, hit me up on an email or something and uh, send me your address and I'll send you some stickers. Huh? They said they found 46 dogs living in uh, small to medium-sized crates without any food or water. She was taken into custody and charged with 46 counts of cruelty to animals. Her bond is set at what? 400 and sixty thousand dollars, almost half a million dollars. Now I'm an animal lover. Hey, I agree with it. But if y'all remember, <laughs> last year they had a kid shoot three people, three or four people at a Texas school, and his bond wasn't with fifty grand. This dude tried to kill three human beings, and uh, his bond wasn't with fifty grand. This woman was mistreating dogs and got half a million dollars, which I agree with. But I'm saying that that kid over there should have got. His shit should have been way higher than what it was. And then he, uh, I think he reoffended or something not too long after that. Okay. Pop up picture three. This fella right here. He's a nice looking fella, ain't he? he looks kind of, looks like he's scared to death. This man was on parole uh, for a 2019 burglary. And he is back in jail. Ooh. What could he be back in jail for? Shoplifting a candy bar? Uh, jaywalking? Nope, 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 nope. This man, uh, what's his name? He's 41 years old. Jermaine Mack is his name. And uh, he was arguing with a woman on uh, Seneca Street at 5.30 p.m. last Thursday. Uh Said they were arguing. I don't know what they were arguing about. And uh, she told him that she was going to call the police. Guess he's a rock star because he got a star right there between his eyes tattooed. I ain't never understood that, but okay. She said, I, when he, she told him, leave me alone. Or I'm going to call the police on you. Mac pulled out a gun and shot her in the face. And then ran away. Detective said the bullet entered her the left side of her jaw and exited behind her left ear. Uh, that is on. Uh, I hope that lady goes by her a lottery ticket because she is very damn lucky that it did not go up in her brain or anything and kill her. Not every time you get shot in the face or the head and, and, and survive. Or if you do survive, you're usually, you know, not the person you used to be anyway. Anyway, uh, they said he was on parole for a conviction back in 2019. He was charged with attempted second-degree murder, possession of a firearm by a felon, and illegal use of weapons. So he is in custody. Uh, maybe our parole board, which is sucks ass, obviously, because they just let out a guy that was supposed to be doing life for murdering two people. And uh, the family fought against it, and they still let him out. Maybe if the parole board start doing their goddamn job correctly, Motherfuckers like this won't be out of jail where he can shoot somebody. Make people do their time. I mean, some people are going to disagree with it. And I'm not saying everybody that goes to jail is going to stay a criminal. You know, not everybody does. I'm just saying, though, know, come on. This is, this is happening way too often. Way too often we're reading about people out on parole or people out on bond that are committing way bad felonies I mean heinous felonies against other people the next guy here this fine looking fella right here 
I don't know what Duke the dog is doing over there, but he's making all kind of noise. As long as he don't unplug nothing, we should be all right. This man here was arrested. Uh, when was he arrested? Just last night. Oh, today, yesterday. Yesterday morning. He was arrested in Baton Rouge on uh, early Sunday morning after crawling into someone's car window at the gas station while they were at the gas pump. Uh, and he threatened them with a the knife, and he demanded beer and money. Guess he was thirsty. So I, I guess he was really, really thirsty that he needed beer and money. The East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office said the robbery happened around 6 a.m. Sunday outside the racetrack and, mar uh, racetrack and marathon gas stations on Segan Lane near I-10. which That's a pretty busy area right there. Hello, Melissa. According to sheriff's office, a man had uh, parked at the gas pump at racetrack when a 44-year-old Siegro Flores crawled through his front passenger window wielding a large knife. He reportedly pointed the knife at the, the guy's back and demanded him give him money and beer. When the victim explained him to him that the racetrack was closed, he put the knife to his throat and instructed him to drive to the marathon across the street. Upon arrival at the second gas station, the victim entered and told the clerk he was being robbed. So this dumbass, he must have been high on something or he's just fucking stupid. That He's got somebody at knife point just lets them go in the store by themselves and that can be like, hey, call the cops. This idiot outside's robbing me. He said the cop showed up and found stupid ass still sitting in the victim's front passenger seat with the knife tucked into his sock. He was taken into custody and booked in East Parish Parish Prison on charges for armed robbery and aggravated kidnapping. Uh, no bond information available. Uh, he shouldn't have a bond. That's why, because if you're if you're if you legally can have a gun in the state of Louisiana, it's not illegal to have one in your car. You don't need a permit for that. Get a gun and put it in your car and keep it where you can. And when you get out these gas stations, the public gas station, be Pay attention to your surroundings. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. I guarantee if that had been me pulled up there to get fuel, I pay attention to my surroundings. I guarantee you I'm packing. And uh, the dude would have pulled a knife on me. I might have got cut, but he would have, uh, I would have been giving him some, uh, I would have gave him the bullets out of my gun uh, straight out the barrel. I would have put lead in him. So, obviously, I mean, he's probably a fucking dope head or something. What's up, David? Carry a gun in your car if you can legally, people. Pay attention to your surroundings. Dirt bags like this, like I said, you can't even get gas no more. He's going to do something like that. Nah, nah, nah. You come up to me and you pull out a knife. You just brought a knife to a gunfight. Like I said, you may cut me, but I guarantee you, I will unload every round I have in there on you. So... Hopefully he don't get out of prison anytime soon. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, need to start. People, everybody needs to pay attention. I see way too many people like that. Like you know, they they have no clue of what's going on around them. Nothing. Uh, this next one, we got a picture on this guy. Yes, we do. Uh, this next dude, of course, he's a piece of shit too. This guy right here. Yeah, he's he's a real piece of shit. I feel you breathing on my leg, Duke. Duke the dog is breathing on my leg. Oh, this guy right here's in Baton Rouge again also. Like I said, Baton Rouge is turning into shitville. This Baton Rouge man, what did he do? He set his ex girlfriend's house on fire in Hammond. Uh that's bad enough, right? Gonna burn a lady's house down? Yeah, okay. What makes it worse is uh, her uh, her daughter and her pet dogs were inside the house still when he set it on fire. Uh, this happened in Tangipahoe Parish, where, where Hammond's at. But he's from Baton Rouge. He was arrested after, after allegedly, our favorite word, allegedly, uh, setting his ex-girlfriend's Hammond home on fire while her daughter... Her daughters, so I'm taking that's plural. I should have uh, more than one child, and the pet dog were still inside the house. 
the fire marshal's office said uh he's got a weird name his name's danielle johnson uh 38 years old he was taken into custody after setting fire to his ex-girlfriend's house on uh Billville Road in Hammond late Saturday night. Crews with Hammond Fire Department responded to the blaze after the family's pet dog woke up the two sisters. How old were these two children that were in his house that he set on fire? 11 and 14 years old, making them aware of the danger. Good thing that dog was there and uh, smelt that smoke and was able to wake them kids up. <laughs> yeah, he looks like not. He's a dumb. He looks like a dumbass to me. The two girls were able to escape, but the dog was killed in the fire. So yeah, that pisses me off right there. The dog ended up dying. That woke them up and saved their life. Piece of shit. Yeah, you, exactly, Melissa. Piece of shit. The Hammond Fire Department and the State Fire Marshal's Office determined the fire was intentionally set outside the front door of the home. Investigators identified Johnson, the ex-boyfriend of the homeowner, as a suspect, and he was later arrested. Yeah, I, I hope he does too. I mean, why? And you, you knew if you her ex-boyfriend, you knew this lady had children, and you knew the kids were probably there. And he was booked into the Tensho Parish Jail, faced charges with uh, attempted secondary murder charges, aggravated arson, aggravated animal cruelty, violation of a protective order, and criminal trespassing. Hello, Brittany. Uh, he, uh, so obviously she was having problems with, with him before because she had a protective order against him. So obviously he was one of them type of guys that's probably like, oh, if I can't have you, nobody can have you. I, I don't understand that. I mean, I'm sorry his little heart got broken. There, there's other fish in the sea. But for you to, to, if it wouldn't have been for that dog there, them two children might have burned up to death in there. For what? Because she don't want to, to, to smooch with him no more? He's probably a piece of shit and didn't work or something like that. Obviously, there's issues. He has some kind of anger issues that you can go burn somebody's house down, especially when their children are in it. So, I agree with Melissa. Hopefully, karma finds him uh, some anal solutions in jail. Probably not. Uh, it's not like it used to be up in there, but uh, hopefully he, he, he gets a whole lot of time and they don't just put him out on probation. But who the hell knows the way it is nowadays. But, yeah, I'm just glad that the uh, dog will save their life, even though the poor dog did die. But it saved it saved them children's lives. That could have been a horrific incident. Mom needs uh you women, not just her, any other women. Y'all need to pay attention to who y'all decide to go on dates with, okay? Uh especially with I'm I'm glad I'm married. I don't worry about that shit. I got a good wife. But uh they got men out there, especially in these uh social media days. Men I mean, you can have people lie to you. Uh and crazy stuff like that, and they they can come off like uh, hell. What's what's that? What's that TV show they had not too long ago? That stalker TV show. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I liked it. I think it was in two seasons or something like that. Uh, but you, I mean, they really have people out there like that. I mean, they have guys out there manipulate. They'll make you think they hung the moon to you, and as soon as they feel like they got you locked in, uh, no, not catfish. This is a movie. About some guy that was a stalker type guy. Uh, Y'all just need to pay attention. Uh, if you go on with dates and stuff, try to don't ever, especially when you're first meeting somebody, don't ever let them pick you up at your house. Go meet them somewhere. Uh, don't let them know where you live at first. Uh, meet them somewhere. Always make, uh, make sure people know where you're going and, and who you're meeting with and stuff like that. Try to make sure you got a picture of them ahead of time. Let one of your friends or something have a picture of them. So like, you got to cover your ass. So, especially a female. You need to be careful out there, cause especially with this social media age. I mean, they just got a lot of creeps out there. and You need to be careful. I mean, yes, you're right, Brittany. Get get a game plan. Because, uh, like I said, they, they got a lot of creeps out there on... Like I said, back when like when I used to date, I'm old now, unfortunately. When I used to date, you still had to meet people face-to-face and stuff like that. We didn't have all the 
social media stuff for now. So, kind of glad I don't have to deal with it <laughs> at all. This next one, we got another uh, youngster, not a teenager, but uh, damn near. Uh, we considered a man, but he's still a teenager. He was an 18-year-old uh, has been arrested in St. Francisville, which is a very, very nice area. People around here know they got the myrtles and all the plantations and stuff like that. Anyway, an 18-year-old shot and killed a man in St. Francisville Saturday night over there in West Feliciana Parish. The teenager shot to uh, he uh, another teenager was shot to death in St. Francisville. The West Feliciana Sheriff's Office said the shooting happened on Burnett Road in St. Francisville about 9 p.m. Saturday night. Witnesses told deputies they heard gunshots and saw people running from a nearby apartment complex. The victim was identified as 18-year-old James Jackie Johnson. Uh, he was taken to the hospital but later died from his injuries. The shooting remains under investigation. Anyone with information is asked to uh, contact West Feliciana Sheriff's Office. So the 18-year-old was shot and killed. Uh, I guess they're still looking for... Uh, I need to give a class, Yvette. Uh, it's not a class. You just need, just, you just need to pay attention. I mean, uh, like I said, a lot of these men out there think if they just take you on a date, that's automatically, you know... Uh, you gotta watch a lot. A lot of people don't know what no means no. They think you know it, it's a crazy world. But this eighteen year old was killed by <laughs> somebody knows over there who shot him. Hopefully somebody comes forward and says who shot him because uh, he's dead. Eighteen year old, and uh, that's it. End of his life. Uh, no more for him. I'm sure he has parents and everything else and other people that are. Extremely upset and has probably done over something stupid. Nothing. Murdered and killed over nothing at all. I don't know what just got brought up on my phone. Uh, we're going over to... Uh, what's up, Aaron? We're going uh, over to New Orleans now. You know what a great place that is. Uh, like I said... People ask me, it's like, oh, what's Bourbon Street like? I'm like, oh, if you want to know what it smells like, just go stand in the porta can because that's what it smells like. It smells like piss and shit. And uh, New Orleans has gotten to be extremely dangerous, just, you know, just like Baton Rouge. Just over this weekend, just over this weekend alone, we had eight people shot, one dead, and that was all within 12 hours. 12 hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trifecta for crime, drugs, money, and love. You, you're you're correct. I don't know about the love part. Uh, crime, drugs, and money, and uh, other stuff. What's up, bumper jumper? Yeah, twenty four hours a day, three gun competition. It, it it's crazy down there. Like I said, in twelve hours they had had eight people shot and one dead. Eight people were shot. One of them was killed in six hours in uh, New Orleans police. In six hours, they said not even twelve. Killing was reported to police at 2.57 a.m. on St. Andrew Street in Central City. They found two men wounded and took one, one age 58, to the hospital. Within five hours, he died, police said. The other shootings, according to preliminary police reports, were reported in the 7th Ward. That's not surprising at all. Uh, the 7th Ward. Yeah, well, they working on Chicago's title. They had a 40-year-old man and a 50-year-old man that were shot Friday at 10 p.m. in the 7th Ward. They were outside when someone opened fire, just shot them. I'm sure it was an argument about something. In the central business area, a 40-year-old man and a 30-year-old man were shot just before 11 p.m. on LaSalle Street outside the Jung Hotel in uh residential house or something like that. I, I don't know. Oh, then uh, paramedics took both of them to the hospital. They reported more than, well, check this out how many shots is. They reported more than 43 shots were fired at that ho at the hotel and where the guests were staying in their rooms for two hours as police gathered e evidence. They had 43 shots fired. That's a lot of bullets. 
34-year-old woman, 34 year old woman was shot uh, over there by North Rampart, and that's down by the Water District. She heard gunshots and realized she was wounded multiple times. Uh, and then a man was shot at about 10 a.m. Uh, near Southern University of New Orleans. Uh, it, it's it's freaking crazy. <laughs> she likes my new filter. I like my new filter. I feel like I'm just a badass biker dude now or something like that. But yeah, uh, so if you do happen to come down to New Orleans, uh, I want to be real careful, especially if you don't know where you're going. You make a wrong turn off of Bourbon Street and you're going to end up in an area of the city you don't want to be in. If you get down the wrong alley, yeah, you're going to get robbed, uh, shot, something like that. Uh, hell, they're shooting each other on Bourbon Street now. Of course, Mardi Gras might be in peril. Uh, let's get on over to that story. Uh, the great uh, Mayor Cantrell down there. Just being sarcastic because she sucks ass. Uh, they're talking about uh, canceling some Mardi Gras stuff. <laughs> yeah, I bet you they do. I might look like this after I retire. Just shave my head and grow me a long beard. Of course, my beard will be more white at this point. Said so party go goers that are looking forward to upcoming Mardi Gras season could possibly be in for a massive disappointment due to critical shortage of important city employees. They have a shortage of police. Uh, they have a shortage of EMS workers. They have a shortage of uh, just uh, sanitation workers and everything else. They're operation, operating on 60% of their uh, current staffing right now. So they're missing 40% of their people. And she says uh, if they can't figure out what to do, they're going to start canceling some of these uh, Mardi Gras parades, which is going to... Big old hit on New Orleans because that's where a lot of their revenue comes from is this Mardi Gras season. I, I don't have a clue on how many millions upon millions of dollars is uh, spent doing that. But it's a lot. It's a lot of millions. And uh, if they start canceling parades, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt a lot of businesses down there also. This next one is we're going to get the mother of the year up here. Uh, this is her right up here. There's two pictures, one right there, one there. That's her. This is the car that she's driving. Not a great picture of the car. So uh, looks like maybe some kind of Honda or something. Anyway, she's wanted. What is she wanted for? She's wanted for shoplifting, obviously, because she's in a store stealing shit. But uh, there are her her kids are also wanted too, because she's the mother of the year. David said, uh, "I honestly wish I was young enough to be a policeman. I wish I was. Uh, I don't know how old you are, David. I mean, they got guys in their forties start doing it. It's like me. I know I'm fifty one now, getting closer to fifty two, uh, closer to retirement age. I would want to start at this age." Not in this day and time, anyway. Anyway, authorities are looking for this lady and her two children. After what did they do besides stealing? Yeah, I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to start at 56 either. Yeah, bumper jumpers like don't do it. Bumper jumper, we both on our way out. So. Her and her kids are wanted because uh, they were shoplifting. And then they set the clothing rack on fire that way. You know, some stores, I think, put the clothing racks outside the front door, the clearance racks. I think they set one of those on fire and ran out of store uh, the diversionary tactic, I guess. They were at a Carter's Children's Clothing Store in Segan Lane. The uh, fire department responded to the scene. Uh, clothing rack outside was on fire. Uh, they put it out. Uh, they're not saying on how... What the age is. The boys look like they, two boys, uh, look like they were ages 10 and under. Uh, so, and look like they were possibly twins. So, this lady right here decided to, she's raising her kids up to be arsonists and thieves. Mother of the year. When they do find her and she does get arrested, she has, she needs to have her children taken away from her to me personally, permanently. 
permanently. I don't care what kind of OCS classes they're going to give her and do this and do that. She should have the uh, taken away from her permanently because she's sitting there training her kids basically to, like I said, be arsonists and thieves. And I guarantee you that this is just the first time they got pictures of them and, uh, or whatever. This ain't the first time they done done it. So that woman definitely needs to uh, lose custody of her kids forever and ever. And hopefully not have any more. This next story comes uh, from The Advocate. A deputy uh, who shot at a suspect saying that he had a gun. Uh, this was back in uh, 2020, I believe. Anyway, he there's a lawsuit now. Uh, okay. East Baton Rouge Parish deputy shot at a suspect last fall. Uh, the court says the deputy claimed the man accused of injuring two people in a 2020 shooting and suspected of violating federal gun laws has stepped out of his car and leveled a firearm at the cops. But in a recent lawsuit filed against the deputy and the sheriff, you know, I pushed the wrong button. Uh, they say the 22-year-old man was actually unarmed and had no way of knowing the people who pulled into his driveway and emerged from an unmarked van holding firearms and wearing ballistic vests that I'm sure said police or sheriff or something across it. They just don't jump out with just black vest on. We're plainclothes detectives from the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office. Moments after stepping out of the van's driver's seat, Deputy Jordan Webb fired his 9mm six saucer rifle. Uh, the complaint says striking Jalen Smullen in his right leg and shattering his uh, fibula. He says the encounter in the driveway at his Baker home left him with mental and physical scars and significant medical expenses. He's accused of six counts of attempted first-degree murder stemming from this September 2020 shooting that injured two Baton Rouge Brookstown's neighbors when the deputy shot him. The following August records show he was wanted on two warrants. One uh, alleges allegations in the state court that he violated his $120,000 bond stemming from the attempted murder charges and two on a complaint filed by the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Allegedly, he took part in a conspiracy, lied to a firearms dealer, and received a firearm while accused of a felony. He struck a plea deal with the feds in July on two weapons related charges. He could receive a maximum of 20 year sentence, but under sentencing guidelines, he is likely to receive less. He's probably going to get like five or some shit like that. Attorneys representing him in the civil lawsuit from Baton Rouge based Morgan law firm did not return any requested phone calls. His defense attorney for the criminal matter, Brent Stockstill, could not be reached. They said uh, Webb was placed on leave after the shooting as part of its standard policy. The shooting was later ruled justified by the investigator. Uh, Hicks added that the shooting was not ruled life-threatening in part because deputies rendered medical aid immediately after Webb got shot. Uh, this guy was in all kinds of shit. The FT ATF had bugged his car. He had uh, purchased AR-15 parts. Uh, Anyway, uh, trust me, he, he probably had a gun. This guy's looking for a payday. He needs money to buy his Zuzus in jail for when, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure about them. They wasn't probably yelling sheriff's office either, get on the ground or nothing like that, and with sheriff on their vest. They all, you know how the bad guys always do. Oh, they just jumped out, and I was scared for my life. I thought, you know, I mean, like this guy's such a badass. The mob's coming after him. Okay, ninjas. He had ninjas. He he always had the fear of ninjas, and he thought ninjas were gonna get him. It, it's another excuse. You know it. I know it. He's just trying to get a payday so he can have some money to spend while he's in jail because he likes the honey buns and popcorn. So. Hopefully, because a lot of these, a lot of these places, a lot, a lot of departments and other things, even stores, they will just uh, <laughs> ninjas did get them. Yeah, they are. Uh, 
they'll just they'll like somebody they'll just pay a settlement amount way under what these people want to sue for because it's cheaper for them to pay the settlement amount than it is to fight them in court. Let's say the dude wants to say, I don't know, 25000 he'll take. Oh, yeah, we'll take that. But, you know, it'll cost, you know, 110000 or something to with attorney fees and everything else fighting him in court on the lawsuit. So a lot of times they'll just do that because it saves them money or whatever. I don't agree with it. I say spend the money and fight them and make them pay your lawyer expenses or something. And uh, maybe people will sue a lot less for bullshit. We see it like that happen because a lot of people they'll just sue just just because hoping to get a settlement out of it. We uh, talked about this I think last Wednesday or, or Wednesday before last, about that constable in New Orleans that the woman reported that this woman was being raped in the street and he didn't even go down there and ignored it. They had they pulled video. They saw him actually walk off in the opposite direction of this and stuff like that. Well, good news has comes out about it that he did resign. He quit. And hopefully nobody ever hires this man again and he don't ever wear a badge again. Because if he didn't go down there and do anything about this and he's going to walk in the opposite direction, uh, he don't need to wear a badge. We're out here supposed to help people and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, cop or no cop, I don't care. I call you out when you need to be called out. And uh, he needs to be called out. And the uh, the piece of shit. He let, he let he just walked off opposite direction. Did not run down there and try to stop this this lady from being raped. I mean, Jesus Christ, what kind of piece of shit can you be? Man, don't ever need to wear a badge again. This one right here, we're going over to Slidell, which is in the New Orleans area. Also, they had a 15 year old got arrested. What? Uh, this was last Thursday. What the 15 year old get arrested for? Mm. Was he selling candy bars? Mm, got some watermelon whiskey in there that is uh, delicious. The 15 year old got arrested because he brought a loaded handgun to high school Thursday morning. According to the Slidell Police Department, the officer searched the teen after he was seen showing off the gun at Salmon High School. A school resource officer found the teen with a 9mm pistol in his waistband because. I'm a dumbass. I'm going to bring the gun to school. I'm going to show my friends that I have a loaded pistol. So somebody's going to go tell on your ass, which I'm glad. I'm totally glad that these kids are that stupid because it could he this kid could have shot somebody there during the day. They arrested the kid for having uh, the gun on school property. He's being held at the Flores Parish Detention Center. At least he didn't even get to go home. Uh, Thank God that that one of them, one of his kid, his friends told on him because uh, he he might he might save some lives there. Fifteen years old, uh, and he's showing it off. He he just thought he was badass. He, he's, pay attention where your guns are. Am I saying, you know, most people you know lock them up or whatever? But I mean, I, I raised my kids. My kids know and if they had touched any of my guns when. They were growing up. They were the drew back nubs, uh, and they tell you that today. Uh, I didn't play. I learned taught them how to, you know, to respect a weapon. That wasn't a, a toy or anything like that. So this next lady we have here, I don't know if Roy's still here or not. I haven't seen him say nothing for a while, but if he was, I'm pretty sure he would be falling in love right about now. This beautiful lady right here. Everybody calm down. I know it's like seeing a supermodel on the screen. What did she do? She is from uh, Calcasieu Parish. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about it. She is, uh, she's a looker right there. Yeah, Roy. I don't know if he's still here or not. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, put that, put that Barry White music on. <laughs> I got music. I just don't have no uh, <laughs> Barry White music for, for background music. JoJo says my 
background music is aggravating. I don't know if anybody else feels like that. That's why I stopped playing it when I was by myself. <laughs> what did she do? Push or read the full story. Anyway, Louisiana lady. She got arrested. What did she do? Did she have dogs in her house? No. She didn't. Was she selling uh, undocumented uh, tax-exempt snicker bars? No, she didn't. She got arrested on August the 15th. She, how old do you think this lady is right here? Let me touch the gym. Talk that again. Uh, she's uh, 28 years old. She's from Prince, Princeton, Louisiana. She was arrested for what? She stabbed her boyfriend. Yeah, yes, that's right. I said that. She is uh, 28 years old, correct? She stabbed her boyfriend and uh, tried to kill him. Just after 10 p.m., the event was reported to the Caddo Parish Sheriff's Office uh, on the 12th. Wendy Bertrand, that's this lady right here, uh, according to the detectives, stabbed her boyfriend in the arm during an argument with her boyfriend's sister and then fled before the cops arrived. Uh, she was eventually found at a nearby gas station eating candy bars. I, no, I don't say that. <laughs> well, while her boyfriend was transported to the hospital for treatment, she was apprehended by detectives on uh, Saturday the 13th. She was charged with aggravated battery and put into the Cato Correctional Center. Uh, in arrest is an indication that probable cause exists. I was just saying, you know, she's innocent until proven guilty and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't know. He was probably breaking up with her or something like that. I don't know. But uh, she took, I wonder, was it a steak knife? I mean, because I'm steak, I mean, that's going to that's gonna hurt. That serrated knife going in. Uh, yeah, so she, she took a knife to him and uh, jugged him, jugged him up. We're coming close to the end now. We got one more story here. Let's see what we got from uh, since she done stabbed her boyfriend. You sound like somebody's here and they're not. Just old Duke the dog moving around down there. Yeah, I think she did need a Snickers bar. Because you see what happens when uh, you don't have a Snickers and turn you into Betty White or something like that. Anyway, of course, we're in uh, Louisiana. Uh, Aaron says she looks like she feels bad about it. She needs a teddy and a snack. Yeah, Rice Krispie Treats. I, I love Rice Krispie Treats. They're buttery and delicious. Now, it's in Baton Rouge. Just they had a, it's in uh, Pankerville, Louisiana. Had a guy named Joshua Alexander Skull, S K A L. He's 32 years old. I was unable to find any pictures of him. Uh, he is from Baton Rouge, but he is currently behind the bars in Assumption Parish Jail for a traffic stop. Uh, it was initiated by an, uh, an interstate interdiction. Yes, buttery, butter. You never had. Uh, Yes, you can taste the butter in it, Donnie Robinson. If you can go to eat a Rice Krispie treat, and you can taste the butter in it. I have a sophisticated palate when it comes to sweet treats like that. What that Scotcheroo's or the Superior? I don't know what a Scotcheroo is. Aaron, is is that something up there in, in Chicago area in Illinois? I don't know. I never had a scotcheroo. Anyway, we had a inter interdiction deputy stopped, uh, initiated to stop on uh, August the 17th. During the process, the deputy noted factors consistent with illegal drug activity, according to the Assumption Parish Sheriff's Office. They uh, found 149.4 grams of uh psychedelic mushrooms in uh, his vehicle. 
Yeah, get some of them and sprinkle them on some skitties or something. It'd make the make dinner very much more interesting. Uh, assorted drug paraphernalia. <clears throat> Aaron says that they have peanut butter mixed in and are topped with melted chocolate, caramel chips mixed together. It's an old Midwest. I don't know what I just did right here. It's an old Midwest uh, thing, I think. It sounds delicious. My fat self don't need any. Uh, yeah, well, it's a it's a quite a bit of a drive to Aaron's house there, Bumper Jumper. He lives on the outskirts of Chicago, so <laughs> it's not a hop, skip, and a jump over there. And Aaron is a chef. Everybody, by the way, who has uh, I had to say it podcast, which is uh, I'm a regular listen to. Uh, so if you ever want to go listen to Aaron, Aaron's kind of like a, just says uh, he talks about some current events and gives his unbridled opinion on it also. I, I enjoy his podcast. I'll check him out if I get a chance. Anyway, this dude's uh, 32 years old. He's charged with possession with intent to distribute mushrooms and drug paraphernalia. Why did he get stopped? He got stopped for doing, and everybody saying, oh, traffic cops. Dude was doing 103 and a 55. Yeah, 103 and a 55. Dude got stopped. He had illegal window tint. He had no license plate. He had uh, a careless operation. Uh, he has no bond as of yet. So, all the people that say, you know, traffic cops, uh, a lot of shit gets found because of traffic. So, I'm always saying that. So, this guy, he must have been using the mushrooms because if I had... If I was transporting a whole bunch of illegal dope in my vehicle, yeah, I must say he must have been using the mushroom. If I had a bunch of illegal dope in my car, I'm not going to be doing 103 miles an hour. My ass going to be doing like 69. 69 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna have to profile my ass because, uh, or get me for bumping the line because I, I'm not gonna be speeding, like I said. But uh, yeah, he he's definitely a, a dumbass, Jim. Because uh, like I said, he had to be uh, uh, holster. You're on the Motor Cop podcast and saying traffic enforcement don't help solve crimes. It's just that, like, don't. It just don't make sense. It don't make sense. You got to. <laughs> but traffic enforcement does help solve a lot of crimes. You know, that's all the stories I had written down. I was going through this real quick, see if I've seen any uh, extras that I missed. He said, I would have been stopped for doing three, eating the product. And then, yes, he might have been speeding, thinking that aliens or something was chasing him. Oh, we did have a, another one. Uh, it's happened in Baton Rouge uh, on the 16th of August. Uh, they had two people that were taken into custody after deputies watched them tossed what appeared to be drugs in a gun out of their car during a pursuit Tuesday afternoon. The brief chase unfolded shortly before 3 p.m. when the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office tried to stop a gold Mercedes on a traffic violation. Like <laughs> that, so we appreciate it, Jim. Uh, they had a brief chase started. Uh, and they threw the shit out like I guess they don't notice we throw shit out and we log it on the radio hey at this location he uh, threw shit out and uh not sure what charges they are all got but they got guns and some dope don't run don't run uh, you can get away sometimes but uh you won't get away all the time I'm gonna Wednesday. We did get a new review on Apple. I'm gonna read it. Uh, 
probably just about one of the best reviews we've gotten so far. And uh, I'm going to read it Wednesday though, on a regular episode tonight. That Louisiana woman got arrested. She's accused of assaulting a deputy over her handicap placard or, or a handicap placard. I don't think it was her. No, it's hard to outrun. But, uh, this one's way up north in uh, Monroe, Louisiana. It happened on the 15th. A uh, Washita Parish uh, Sheriff's Office deputy noticed the driver was illegally parked in a handicapped parking space at the mall, Pecan Land Mall. And uh, according to the deputy, the driver was allegedly using another person's handicap placard. Once the driver refused to identify herself, the deputy walked back to the patrol unit with the placard. The driver uh, allegedly followed the deputy and tried to grab it out of his hands. Uh, no, no, no. Don't do that. Uh, the deputy then pushed the driver back and told her, Stop, lady. Do not touch me. You're going to give me cooties. Yeah, I don't know about that. The driver came towards the deputy again and grabbed his left wrist. No, no, no. Do not touch the deputy. The deputy placed the driver under arrest, who is identified as 26-year-old Kelsey Harris. Harris was transported to the Washita Correctional Center and charged with handicap parking penalty, resisting an officer, battery an officer. Don't do that. Oh, yeah, she... Well, she had her grandma's handicap placard or something because her lazy ass was too lazy to walk across the, the fucking parking lot or something like that. Uh, so, it, I mean, don't do it. You can get lazy. It's like, it's like some people. I mean, if y'all are one of them, if anybody on here don't, don't get pissed off or get pissed off, I don't fucking care. Uh, yes, Duke, we hear you. Uh I'm the. I'm not gonna. I don't drive around. I'm not one of the people. I'm not gonna drive around the parking lot looking for a spot up front. I'll just drive to the. If, it's, if I know it's busy, if I pull in a parking lot and I see that the parking lot's crowded, I'll just drive to the back of the parking lot and park back there and walk my fat ass into the store. I mean, I've seen people drive around for ten minutes looking for a place where they could close to the. I mean, fuck, you could have been in a store and been shopping by the time you got parked. But you know, people that you know, my dad. You know, my dad was uh, legally handicapped towards the end of his life in uh, extreme back problems. And uh, he he got a damn placard stuff. And we actually had to talk him into it because he, he wouldn't even use he wouldn't use it. And uh, you do, but you have a lot of people out there that do need those. And uh, handy, real handicapped people and older people and stuff like that. And when you have a, a healthy younger person that's using uh one of their relatives placards and stuff that's that's just fucked up to me you can walk your lazy ass i mean come on you you might have just took a spot for some little old or some type of handicapped person now that they don't have nowhere to park because your fucking ass is lazy that's just shitty it's all get out so i mean they just don't need to do that i mean <laughs> oh you they got people it pisses me off. Uh, you're going to get me off on a fucking rant uh, the, the The striped parts in the parking lot and shit, they're so fucking... Uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to walk with it. I actually have a limp if I walk too much because I only have three toes on my right foot. They wanted to classify me as legally handicapped when I cut them toes off, two of my toes off when I was a kid and I told them I wasn't fucking handicapped. So, no, you know... It's just not going to happen. Uh, you just can't. But they, they'll park in those things because they're so fucking lazy. Uh, they they don't want to uh, walk. Walking is not going to hurt anyone at all. Let's see. We are at over an hour. That's going to be it for this evening. I appreciate everybody that came along. Jim, I'm glad you got to uh, jump in here. That, uh, you don't usually be able to catch the live and stuff like that. We're going to, uh, old Bumper Jumper, we're going to have to get him on for another episode because uh, he's still got plenty of funny stuff coming on and stuff like that. And uh, I appreciate everybody coming in. Hope I didn't bore anybody too much. Like I said, I just like jumping in. I get, I get so many 
There's so much fucked up shit going on in the world today, especially just in in my area alone. That we would have to, we'd, we'd have for me to get everything in on Wednesdays. Uh, we'd be here till midnight. We'd have to go to like three hours or more to get them all in. And uh, I'm just not gonna. I don't want to do no three hour show. Uh, Freebird demo, you know, can uh, do that. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll have to set a date up. But uh, so everybody, uh, remember, stay safe. Always tell the truth. Don't matter if you can get your ass chewed out or not. No matter what type of job you have, like, uh, it could be retail, law enforcement, no matter. Uh, you know, your boss comes in, you did something, admit that you fucking did it. You uh, know, take your take your licks with it. Huh? It's always better to be truthful than to be a liar. And uh, remember to watch you back. Watch partners back and uh, y'all stay safe out there. We'll see y'all Wednesday for sure. Thanks for watching. And remember to smile because Iceman could always be behind you. We're out. <laughs>